In our coffee kombucha episode, we saw two important things. First, it tasted better to have ground coffee in our kombucha. A lot more of the flavor and aroma came out of it. Because when we used already brewed coffee, it tended to taste very thin and pretty stale. And secondly, when we used baking spices like cardamom or cinnamon, uh, even the smallest amount tended to be far, far too much. We used a fourth of a teaspoon, and that was absolutely overwhelming. But those were just theoretical improvements we could make to our kombucha, as we didn't ever actually test them out. So I think today's the day for that. And then to be scientific about this, I think it would make sense to test small variations in coffee quantity, both then brewed and ground, different grind sizes, different types of coffee, just really step our way carefully towards these findings. But that sounds really boring, so I don't want to do that. And instead, I think I'm just going to try to redo some of the recipes I've tried before, try a few new things, and just see if we've learned enough to make them a little bit better. And first up, I'm going to remake Turkish coffee. It had dates, it had spices, all we tasted were spices. So we're going to switch out the brewed coffee for ground, we're going to drastically reduce how much of the spice we put in, and we're going to give it a lot more dates. We're also going to be trying a more chocolatey mocha, and another sweet vanilla coffee as well, with just a little bit of tinkering there. And then in a different episode, I tried to make the dirty banana cocktail. It had rum, it had banana juice, it had coffee, it had a blended up whole banana, it had milk. It was uh, quite horrible, and it kind of tasted like part of an ashtray had fallen into it. Somehow still not the worst recipe we made that episode. But I'm looking to make a slightly less dirty banana. More of a uh, mildly disheveled banana, if you will. Next, I want to try an episode that I've heard works strangely well outside of kombucha, which is a cold brew shandy. Half lemonade, half coffee. A little weird, but with kombucha's inherent tartness, I think it should make sense. And then finally, there's a rumor that if you mix coffee, Earl Grey, and a little bit of vanilla, it ends up tasting like the breakfast cereal Fruit Loops. Now, do we need a Fruit Loops kombucha? Uh, absolutely, I do. So let's get started. First up is our Turkish coffee kombucha, and we're starting with 20 grams of dates. These are medjool dates, and they are fantastic. And we're throwing it in the blender here with just enough kombucha to cover it uh, so that we can expose as much of the surface area as possible. That'll let more of the flavor and more of the sugar steep out. And then to the bottle, I'm going to add what I hope is about 1 32nd of a teaspoon of cloves. And then I've also toasted and ground up some cardamom, so I'm going to add about the same amount. And finally, I've got my freshly ground coffee, which is a medium roast and a medium grind. I'm going to add 3 grams of that. I love cardamom and I love dates, so expectations are high. Ooh, that looks gritty. Next up, we've got three grams of our coffee, two grams of our homemade vanilla extract, 14 grams of simple syrup. This is a one-to-one -one simple syrup, meaning it's half sugar, half water. And that's it for bottle number two. For our mocha this time, we are doubling the amount of cocoa, which is a half teaspoon now. Because it had a hint of chocolate, but uh, we want a little bit more than that. Another three grams of coffee. 14 grams of simple syrup. And that's our mocha. Next up is our less dirty banana. Three grams of coffee. And then I've got some bananas that I froze and unthawed so that they turn into this disgusting liquid mess. Because I want 30 grams of the juice. If you don't have a juicer, this isn't the most efficient way to get juice out, but uh, it does get you there. Then we're just adding nine grams of simple syrup. As you can see, much more respectable than its dirty banana counterpart. Although it's not having nearly as much fun. That's bottle number four. For our cold brew shandy, I'm starting with a fourth of a teaspoon of lemon zest. This is going to be very similar to how I usually do a lemon or limeade. Then I'm going to add 24 grams of lemon juice. Three grams of coffee. 11 grams of simple syrup, 
and then just kombucha to fill. That's bottle number five. For our final brew, our Fruit Loops kombucha, I'm going to use about two grams of Earl Grey tea. It's not really meant to be used loose leaf like this, so we're going to get even more grit than usual. This time I'm doing two grams of our coffee, two grams of our vanilla extract, 14 grams of simple syrup, and then we're ready to fill. Does not smell like Fruit Loops yet. But that is our final bottle. I'm gonna let these go for about three days at 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The cold brew shandy I might let go an extra two days just because it is primarily citrus juice and that does have a slower carbonation. But I'll see you then. We are back and we are gonna start with our Turkish coffee. And we're gonna start a little carefully here just because since we have that date pulp in here, we don't wanna risk a explosion all over the ceiling. Yeah, we're okay. No, we're not. Primarily smells like cloves. That is jam-packed with flavor. The dates and the cloves come through very cleanly. There's kind of the smell of coffee, but I don't really taste it. A lot going on here. None of it's unpleasant. There's good sweet sour balance. It's well carbonated. You can kind of taste the coffee, but uh, definitely the cloves, I think, are the star of the show. The cloves and the dates. Yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot going on. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot to suss out there. Sometimes I pick up the coffee. Sometimes I pick up the dates. Sometimes the cinnamon. It's not distinctly kombucha, but it is very, very flavorful. And quite pleasant. I kept saying cinnamon. I mean cardamom. This is a distinct difference, but it does come through and it does pair nicely with the cloves. Overall, it's a, an enormous improvement. You can also note that I'm not inverting these bottles. Uh, a lot of the coffee grounds have settled at the bottom, and I would like them to stay there. This is our sweet vanilla. It's got a bit of that staler canned coffee smell to it. It reminds me of a sour version of those small Starbucks bottled coffees. The coffee's very upfront. The vanilla is a little bit subtle. I'm not sure if we need any more of that, but uh, the sugar I think we would have needed to bump up to probably at least 20 grams of the simple syrup. Yeah, just mostly reminds me of canned coffee. Not unpleasant, but you wouldn't want it to be this sour. You would want to mask that in a bit of sugar. Next up is our mocha, which we use the same amount of sugar for, so I feel like we're gonna run into the same issue. Or a different issue entirely. There we go. A lot more of the coffee grounds have made their way to the top this time. It doesn't taste like chocolate, and it is probably a little too sour still, but somehow that cocoa powder kind of masks that sourness a bit. It's not so sharply tart this time. It's more of just a regular cup of coffee. There's a little bit more bitterness, there's more depth, I think maybe combined with the vanilla and combined with a little bit more sugar and we really have something there. Overall, this is definitely the better coffee brew. Kind of tastes exactly like what I would expect a coffee kombucha would taste like. Uh, this one's close. Next up, God help us, is our less dirty banana. More carbonation than the others. Smell the banana in there with the coffee. The banana's there. It's a little bit funky. The little... coffee's kind of a sour note in the background though. For some reason that's not coming through very strongly. I think maybe a little bit extra coffee, a little bit less banana, a little bit more sugar, and maybe we'd have something, but it's not something I would want because I don't think I like banana mixed with coffee. In fact, I'm 100% certain I don't want this, so. Banana, no matter how disheveled, I don't think I'm interested. It's not bad, but it ain't good. Next up is our cold brew shandy, which I had to wait an extra few days for. So it better give me carbonation. It did okay. 
strong punch of lemon, some coffee in the background. I get the lemon, but I don't really get coffee. It's just kind of lemonade with a little bit extra bitterness. Not necessarily in a bad way, it's just kind of got more depth there. It's an unusual lemonade. It's a little too sour again. It does kind of taste like a shandy though. It's got this sharp punch of tartness from the lemonade, and then there's bitterness in the back end, kind of like you would get with a beer. And as I keep drinking, some of that tartness goes away, and it's a little bit of a more well-rounded sweetness. I think with just like an extra gram of sugar more, it might be a little bit better balanced, but uh, overall it's really good. And then finally, I was promised Fruit Loops. Let's see. All right, I'm less skeptical now. I can kind of see it, but it's kind of like if the flavor of Fruit Loops was divided up. Instead of that single punch of Fruit Loop flavor, you got a start and then it moves to a middle and then it moves to an end. So it's a little disconcerting. Then there'll be a note of sharpness from the kombucha, a note of bitterness from the coffee, kind of all over the place. I would say it's mostly just tastes like a coffee kombucha, just with those added floral notes popping in. Not bad, but more of a, a novelty than something I would want to come back to. Overall, I think these worked a lot better than our last batch. Uh, everything was improved. Everything here was drinkable, except that banana one. That one I'm going to pour down the sink. I think the Turkish coffee and the Shandy were the most interesting. Those will probably be the ones I finish off first. And then that mocha, I think, was the closest to a pure coffee kombucha that I've tasted so far. We could have done a three-stage fermentation to get rid of all this grit and the coffee grounds that popped up occasionally, but uh, for me personally, I don't think it's worth it. I would rather drink them than wait an extra three days. There's some balancing issues there, though, because I think we want sweetness and bitterness to be the primary flavor with sourness a little bit buried beneath. And I think it just took more sugar than I thought to get there. But we made better coffee kombucha, so I'm satisfied. Let me know if you have any other coffee recipes to try. Otherwise, uh, this is Reckless Booch.